It's gonna be another hot one today. It's gonna to be supposed to be 104. Watch that T-post. This hot girl, isn't it? Woo. You were sweating. But you'd rather be grazing. Go over there and try to tear the feed sack open. I know how you are. I had to go get some more turkey feed. Yeah, of course, she's sweating. But they've got shade. The bison are currently in the barn. We had to kick the horses out here, and uh, they've got plenty of shade over there. You can tell they're choosing not to use the shade but whew, it is 104 degrees here right now it's been like this for a couple of days now yesterday it was 104 uh i've got we've had to it, it's it's so hot right now we separated some yearlings that we um are getting ready for a sale and we had to the horses are typically in our barn here that's kind of where the operations are out of is right here little feed rooms in there and right now i had to open that up for our yearlings to go in there because it is so hot they're miserable marissa's been watering them <laughs> with the uh, sprinkler system out in uh, the back of the ponderosa we've been sprinkling uh we've been running a sprinkler system for them and then we opened up our barn because it's so hot now the horses don't don't start getting all defensive but the horses um do have shade there's a whole lot of shade right over here but as you can tell they're choosing not to they're hanging around our car and the barn and whatnot they're choosing not to uh, they'd rather grace than uh be in the shade apparently so yes yeah, extremely hot here in southern oklahoma ready for some fall and cooler weather you gotta take a look at this special treatment the CEO is trying to take care of these yearlings here that we've got pinned up for upcoming sale. Put a tarp up for them. They tore the other one down. It's over there on the ground. But here, look at this special treatment. I mean, these guys get bloody hot up here. They're, the other half are at the pond, but these guys are well taken care of, I'd say. CO is going the extra mile, but they love it. They do not mind it at all. <laughs> Marissa and I have decided to take on the task, and this goes in with our regenerative practicing. We decided to start running hot wire, and the process has begun right here. It's gonna be an investment of some time, for sure. Bear with us, guys. Let's get it started. All right, here we go, Kathy and I, which is Marissa, in case y'all didn't know, it's first name, Catherine. We are uh, gonna start driving these T-posts. We're gonna use the bucket to do it. We made some changes and I got a brush hog, brush hog down this line to give us some room, but what we decided is we were about to start putting our uh, offsets right here along this fence. We got down there and it's just a complete mess between us and our neighbor. So we're gonna bypass that and we're gonna just do a stand off off of the fence we're going to drive some uh used t-posts off three or four foot and there'll be a threshold in between there'll be a buffer in between this fence and then our main line of hot wire our high tensile strand our single strand that we're going to come in with our power right there we're going to go all the way down our line here then we're going to actually go back and attach it to a new fence a bar bar
back up. Yep. He's been and got some pressure on it. Yeah! Good, now we just straighten it up. Kinda, before I break it. That's it. All right, guys, I don't know what day uh, we've been working on this. As you can tell, this uh, this little project has been a uh, little side project that Marissa and I have been working on. Uh, a little bit here, a little bit there. We got a little extra time in the day before it gets too hot. Hanging out here with these yearlings. Uh, they're always in this pasture, but we're getting it started. Got my tension spool right here. You can put a little hand crank on it and tighten it. I don't know the technical name for it. I'm sure I'll learn all this good stuff. Got our high tensile strand started right here. Put it on these T-posts. Marissa and I came through here the other day, drove these T-posts about 20 feet apart, and all I did was use the measurement of these T-posts. They're about 10 feet apart, and so I was just walking, sitting in the T-posts, Marissa was driving down with the skid steer. Well, I've got, it, I've got the spool on the back of the ATV here, and we're going to drive down this lane. I'm going to stretch it out, then come back, uh, crank it, and then uh, I'll put them on my little 
insulators that are on each T post. And we're gonna do our standard height of about 36 inches, which is what a lot of places do for one strand. Uh, and this will be our main power line that'll eventually tie into this when I wanna make get it hot. And it's tied up to the barn where we ha always, always have power, typically full electricity and don't have to use solar. of our line here. Black berries are so bad right down here. So this is the end of our line. Right here, I'm gonna throw this back. So here we are. All right, I got my end insulator here tied up against to my H brace. Now we can go back through, tighten it up, and then we'll come back through, put our little insulators on, get our 36 inch height. We'll put them in right here. All the way down. got so it's the first time running standoffs i don't know how far off they are but there's different standoffs i've learned that you can put around t-posts um to stick off but we wanted to get as further away from this as possible so i think this is the longest standoff that gallagher makes and um the reason we have it on this side of the fence this is our main line basically our main hot wire and uh it's a uh this is a high tensile strand we're doing a one single strand all the way from the barn which we're getting it powered from the barn our electricity um with our m1800 mi i1800 whatever it is um energizer powered at the barn this is our main line so and then when I'm running this line, I decided to do a standoff because we had issues with the bison here in our winter pasture trying to come over into pasture one. We had a cover crop on half of this pasture last year and they wanted to be over there, obviously. So this year I'm planting another cover crop right here on this half. This is a brand new barbed wire fence. This is a cross fence, five strands. You can see how tall it is up to my chest. So, they shouldn't be jumping over it now because it's a complete new fence. We had a crappy fence before that originally existed here. But Marissa and I are doing something new. We're using the standoffs for the first time here. Uh, Kevin and I have played with it at their place at the Lynch place before. But, so this will be our main hot wire strand right here and it's gonna run all the way to the back of the Ponderosa essentially. So we can do some uh, maybe adaptive grazing or use other critters as well that we haven't really talked about on here for grazing um, or brush control things like that um, so we're using these like bullet you're gonna try to bullet yeah he's too short <laughs> so this is about some of these it ranges anywhere from 36 to 38 inches high if you're doing one strand of hot wire 36 inches is kind of the standard for cattle i guess so we're doing it at about 36 this is a little high in some places because we're up high. We're down low on this hill here. So we're in about the 36 range. So the idea is that this will keep them back and serve as our main line to extend out on whatever other projects we want to do. So that's it. So we're going every 40 feet. I could be doing this the complete wrong way. 
I don't know, when I look at it, I'm like, well, it's pretty tight. And if they learn what this is and to back off of it, we shouldn't have any problems. We may have to come in and adjust our widths, but we're going every 40 feet. Oh, there is another one. Gosh, they're just like wicked looking, but. Got this? Oh yeah, I'm just trying to keep out of the blackberry bushes that'll rip you to shreds, that's all. Well, this is gonna be a management issue though, isn't it? We're gonna have to come through and like. have to come through and either. Yeah, cause you're gonna, well, that, I mean, that will short it. you spray it, but. We try not to spray that or you get a heck of a bushwhacker. To... <laughs> All right. Oh, you're out. Okay, we got to go back to the ATV? No, we're out. It's pre-sunset. Pre-sunset. Nice evening. It is. It was cool today. What? A lot. We got a lot accomplished. Oh, man. It's a Friday evening. It's about beer 30. Um, but uh, Marissa and I... Marissa's been helping me a lot on this fencing project, high tensile hot wire deal um, that we're starting with our bison. Been doing it, and uh, she's been patient with me. But uh, we ran a strand there on this side of that brand new cross fence, and that shit has a like a 10 inch, I don't know, could be a foot standoff right over there. First time we've done that. The problems we have could be is we're gonna have a cover crop in there this fall slash winter and the bison in the past the jumper 54 has had the tendency of jumping fences now that's a new fence we haven't had any issues with it knock on wood but we gave them a little extra security by a standoff with our hot wire and we have to run this hot wire anyways because we're taking it all the way to the back of our property basically and so here's something that i did is i needed to put um we're gonna have to run our hot wire underneath the gate right that's what the insulated wire is for we're gonna basically come all the way over here to this freestanding panel you said dusty what are you doing well i got this freestanding panel uh, i took it from up top at our barn from our corrals and what i like about this is this has a gate so it's pinned up right now but what i've created is a three-way sort of trap situation if we want to let the bison into pasture two we've got that if they're in here we've got this sort of gate here now that can divide between there and there so it'll be able to swing um, both directions a 180 and if we want them in there we can rotate them in there if we want to move them it, it's just so many uh, scenarios that we can do but a freestanding panel what we can do with that is attach our hot wire to it so we just ran our we just ran our longest stretch of this high tensile um, wire, 1,300 feet. And I put a freestanding panel here with a gate so we didn't have to even set a post in the ground. If we don't like this system, we can change it. That's the great thing about a freestanding panel. But it's got a gate, which is the most important. Now, I've got to be careful on this and make sure that this doesn't touch that right there. Of course, we've got to do the standoffs and stuff like that but that's the most important part of it is not letting it touch the metal and then we're gonna drive now that we've got our line here i mowed it real quick and we sort of got a straight line going on but uh now that we've uh, mowed it we took down a bunch of that tall uh grass and weeds uh to prevent from uh touching the hot wire it may happen but now we've got a straight line now we're gonna drive our t-post for our stationary hot wire fence where we're going to divide pasture this was pasture three all of three now it's going to be which is 40 acre pasture is good is basically going to be three and four now so pasture one we did this a while back we may have to show it to you again our diagram of what we call our pasture so you're more in sync with what's going on instead of just hearing me talk about pasture one two three four pasture one is closest to our barn pasture two is our southeast corner and now we're gonna go three four 
with this hot wire because the cool thing about pasture three is going to get a cover crop this fall and winter when it gets high enough and ready we'll rotate them in here and we're going to teach them to use this hot wire so uh there's going to be some struggles there's going to be some uh there's gonna be some mistakes made, but we're willing to do it and train the Big Joe herd to using this hot wire, high tensile stuff. So hopefully it goes well. Right now, Kevin just brought some used T-post over. We're gonna use the skid steer bucket to drive them. And we've got a post halfway. We're gonna see how it goes. Well, yeah, this won't take a second. All right, so we got our Gallagher double insulated hard cable we got 2.5 millimeters double insulated. We got 65 foot. I just dug this out with the skid steer, which Marissa is filming. So we're gonna go under here. We got, oh, three or four inches, which is probably plenty. We'll run it under here. Then we'll have hot wire live. It can go that way. We'll have hot wire and go this way. Not too worried about it that way. We may have to keep running some eventually that way. So we got pasture one, two, what will be three and then four over here. Burying back our insulated wire here. Just covering it up. We've got it running up our H brace, which will tie into our main high tensile line that runs all the way back to the barn. So the first thing we did to start a new fence line is we had to go ahead and stretch out one strand of this high tensile wire from one end to the other get it stretched make it a straight line then you can go back and drive your t-post every 20 foot and so that was the next thing that we did and the next task and i had a good buddy marshall bring his actual t-post driver over and this t-post driver you can make these this t-post driver is like a two and three eighths pipe with a dozer pin uh, welded on the inside of it and you can cut this t-post driver to fit the height of your t-post and how far you want to drop them down it's pretty convenient so we used it and actually the pipe is pushing down on the t-post with the bucket that we're using on the skid steer so mud let us borrow it he helped me while he was here and then marissa and i finished driving the rest of the t-post These little Gallagher insulators just will clip on to the T-post. You gotta kind of squeeze them out and then pop them in actually around the T part of the T-post. So we go through, put all the insulators on, and then once we run both lines, we can put the first one up. So then we went back, we, Marissa and I, set the first line up on the insulators and you clip them in nice and easy and get our 36 inch height. And then we ran another strand of our high tensile wire and this was going to be at 24 inches tall so we had all the insulators set up we had our 36 inch height and our 24 inch height of those insulators something we needed to do and get taken care of we had to go ahead and cover up our insulated cable that connected all of our hot wires under the gates that's important we buried it under here we went through our freestanding panel the open pipe there and i came out on that end so i could tie it to my main my main two lines look at kathy she knows what she's doing. I don't think most wives are out here doing this with their husbands. It's uh, 100 degrees, by the way. Now, she's got the air conditioner cab. <laughs> but we just finished this line. Got our two strands of hot wire. She wanted to run the skid steer. cover our 
cable up here. She did a good job. Like my work attire today. Tennis shoes. Okay. You want to back up, drive through? And then we finally finished the second run, which is dividing pasture three and four. The next move is I've got to figure out. <laughs> I got an issue. I don't know if I don't have enough ground rods or not for this big energizer, but I'm going to have to do some reading and studying, but we've got the hot wire in place. Now I just got to figure the energizer out, figure our voltage before we let the big Joe herd out here. That's the next move. We got a lot to learn and we definitely have our work cut out for us, but we're almost there. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.